You're watching FNN, the Fox News Network. This program contains subject matter and language that may be disturbing to some viewers. It took crews longer than anticipated to find the crack in the 64-year-old pipeline. I'm standing here with Fred, who says he was greatly impacted by the gushing of oil. Can you tell us a little more of what you saw? I sure can. I was sitting on my front porch, grabbed a beer, and fuck her right in the pussy. Back to well, like It's disgusting. Viewer discretion is advised. This is Paul's family of kiss. <laughs> Smack him a god. Smack him a god. It's time for the only news that matters. And thank you, Kyle Trenton, for that killer Paul Stanley of Kiff. Smack him a god intro. I absolutely loved it. Hey, and if you want to send a schmack a gob intro send it to this email right here and i will put it up in order it was received so let's get into the only news that matters john sykes just released a song called out alive it's expected to appear on sykes long-awaited new album siops i think that's how you pronounce it uh i was completely blown away i'm a huge fan of john sykes one of my favorite guitar players and in the beginning of the year, he released a song called Dawning of a Brand New Day that really, really disappointed me. And I was like, oh no, man, I've been waiting so long for John Sykes to release a song. The music, and I hear, and this is it, but this new one, Out Alive, oh man, this song just is blistering. Amazing guitar solos all over, total John Sykes. Love the lyrics, very rebellious and kick-ass. Now I'm really looking forward to PSYOPs. Is that how you pronounce it? I don't know. All I know is that John Sykes is back with a killer song, Out Alive, and hopefully it's not the only one this badass on the next album. All right, next story. And here are some terrible news. Frank Marino wrote, With sorrow, I am forced to announce my immediate retirement from touring and possibly all things related to continuing my career due to an unexpected and debilitating medical condition which makes it impossible for me to tour. I had tickets to see Frank Marino last year, 2020, in Philadelphia. I was going to fly there because Frank Marino has always been in my bucket list. He's one of my favorite guitar players along with John Sykes and I was so excited to see him last year and then COVID happened and it was canceled. So man, I envy everybody that got to see the master live. And he does say at the end of the statement, I ask any that are believers to include me in their prayers. Now I don't know what's ailing him, but whatever it is, I hope for a miraculous recovery. Even if I don't see him live, I want Frank Marino to be back to normal. All right, next story. And yes, more KISS news. Paul Stanley of KISS says, he misspoke when called Destroyer producer Bob Ezrin a functioning addict. This is mind blowing to me. Paul Stanley actually apologizes. Something he never does. And this time he apologizes for something that's the truth. He was a functioning addict. It's a well known fact that Bob Ezrin was doing a bunch of blow back then and releasing these kick ass Alice Cooper albums and what many consider the Sgt. Pepper of Kiss albums, Destroyer, and he's saying sorry that he misspoke? I mean, he is actually apologizing for something that's true. Well, then again, now that I think about it, maybe the reason he's apologizing is because he's telling the truth for once. In related news, a writer and pop culture consultant who's worked with Kiss for decades predicted that Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley will sell the brand to a conglomerate when the time comes for them to bow out. Yeah, that's not shocking. But you know what would be shocking but awesome? If like some billionaire out there buys it and gives it to Ace and Peter for free. That would be glorious. And they go out there with a scab Gene and a scab Paul. All right, next story. Sammy Hagar says, I apologize from the bottom of my heart for exposing Edward Van Halen's 
dark side in my book. Yeah, I'm sure he really means it. You know what's also written in his book? He writes in his book how Eddie had to teach Michael Anthony bass parts before they went on tour. And then, fast forward a couple years later, I guess he forgot he wrote that. Eddie said the same thing in an interview. He had to teach Michael Anthony bass parts before they went on tour. And then Sammy said this about that. For Eddie to say he had to show him what to play and had to teach him all those songs, that is the biggest line of bullshit I've ever heard in my life. Fuck you, Eddie Van Halen, for saying that about Mikey. You're a liar. Yeah, but I'm sure he changed his mind after Eddie died and he regrets saying all that. He learned his lesson not to badmouth anyone. All right, next story. Sammy Hagar bashes David Lee Roth. Well, there goes that theory. Anyway, Sammy says David Lee Roth's voice hasn't aged well, believes that Roth is not honest about his image and his performance. Now, I am a huge David Lee Roth fan. But just to show you that I am not biased, even when it comes to this idiot, I agree. David Lee Roth's voice hasn't aged well. And when he performs, now, it's kind of like a creepy uncle. A far cry from Diamond David Lee Roth in the 80s. But as you see, Sammy can't get over the fact that David Lee Roth was the singer in Van Halen is the singer that most people prefer. Look, I know a lot of you out there, you like Van Halen and Van Hagar. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you like Van Hagar more than classic Van Halen, then you must have ordered a penis pump for your micro penis. When all is said and done, it's all about the music. And give me the six pack with Diamond Dave over any Van Hagar album. I will take Diamond Dave on his worst day than Sammy on his best day. Everybody's musical opinion is personal, not science, and I respect that. In my opinion, I can't stand Sammy Hagar's voice. I never did. It's like nails on a chalkboard. But for me, classic Diamond Dave with that organic vibe and that attitude in his voice, I loved his voice. I'll take that over Sammy Hagar any day. I don't care about that technical bullshit. It doesn't sound technically good to me. It sounds like cats fucking. That's what I think. But hey, who knows? If God forbid Diamond Dave passes away before Sammy Hagar, I'm sure Sammy Hagar will be regretful for all these bad things he's saying about Dave. Just like he's regretful for the things he said about Edward. Fuck you, Eddie Van Halen, for saying that about Mikey. And that's another thing. If Mikey means so much to Sammy, why didn't Sammy try to reconcile Eddie and Michael with that quote-unquote love fest they had several months before Eddie passed away on text messages? Michael never reconciled with him. The guy's a flat-out phony bitch. All right, next story. Longtime Queensryche guitarist Parker Lundgren quits band to focus on other business ventures. Now, this is an exclusive here. You're only going to hear it here first. I happen to know who took his place. None other than C.C. DeVille of Poison. Now, I don't know how this is going to work out with C.C. not being in a band with the four-string bass wizardry of the shredder master Bobby fucking Dahl and the thunderous drumming of that dude that doesn't sit down a lot when he plays the drums. And of course, the Pavarotti of metal, Brett Michaels. All right, I'm kidding. All right, final story, and this shocked me. It is Queensryche related as well. Years before playing the role as Polly Walnuts in The Sopranos, he was the drummer of Queensryche. Don't fuck with me. Who you been talking to? All right, that's it for the news, my friends. Thank you so much for watching. Check out my podcast, the Rock and Metal Combat Podcast, and the Vieira Vault. And I will be in Nashville August. So come out and hang out with me at the Rockin' Pod, man. If you live in Nashville, come on over. If you don't fly in, it's going to be a blast. So stay frosty, my friends. Listen to Black Sabbath and smack them a gob. Farewell and adieu to you fair Spanish ladies.
Farewell and adieu, you ladies of Spain.